Chapter 13, M. Commerce, the legacy chapter, the chapter that did not stack up as well as every other part of the book. And that's because when we were putting this together, the iPhone was fairly new. The whole smartphone platform was only just really coming into its own. Mobile phones were still seen as a standalone artifact that they would sit outside the main marketing domain and that they would need to be treated as a separate channel isolated from the internet. That didn't pan out. Basically, your modern mobile phone is the internet. It's just the internet with a smaller screen. So one of these is not that far removed from the size of the screen that we began with in computing back in the 80s. With M marketing, mobile marketing, there is still SMS based marketing, which SMS basically ate um, multimedia messaging into a single unit. So um, there used to be a distinct differentiation between text and text with attachments. Bluetooth, yeah. There's a bunch of stuff that was done in Bluetooth marketing that was basically irritating, spam, privacy invading, and given Bluetooth just burned your battery life like nothing else, we were asking customers, send your mobile phone flat so we can annoy you with ads. There was no win scenario for being a customer there. Wireless access protocol, every phone, every modern smartphone has Wi-Fi, so that's no longer a major consideration. Uh, basically, phones are effectively wireless modems. Uh, you can tether. The fact that during a free data day, a Telstra free data day, someone was able to tether their mobile phone to their laptop and bring down more traffic than a lot of people can do on a fixed ADSL line there is no real separation of powers anymore. The boundaries, this is a historical footnote, the idea of separating SMS from mobile. We now think of them, it's now apps, SMS, and mobile internet. Basically, what you want to be thinking about is the phone is a mobile computer. So what can we do as marketers to make that mobile computing experience useful? It's also a question of what we're designing. When we start thinking about the products, man, can you see some history here where the words, okay, things that no longer exist. Barnes and Noble, Nokia, Blackberry, <laughs> the Nexus, tanked, but we still have Android phones. We did okay. Oh, wait, that's the iPad. That's the iPod Touch. That's okay. That went wrong. Uh, the iPads stayed. We now have the iPad mini. The iPhones, they made it. The Kindle is sort of ish. We don't talk about the Kindle. And Nintendo came back with something later. But basically, the idea you had was, is this device designed to be Portable is this designed to be fixed? And what benefit sets could you build around that? If with a desktop computer, what was the relative advantage of that object, big, fixed, and solid, against its more mobile competitors, more mobile comrades, competitors? So Ultimately, we broke down the, the mobile phone into a set of platforms. And it's crucial to remember that mobile phones that are basically phones that make phone calls without being attached to the wall still exist. Not everybody's on a smartphone. Not everybody's going to want a smartphone. Innovation adoption curve. Laggards have their reasons. We have the smartphones and, well, we affectionately referred to as the too clever by half phones. We also had the whole series of smart devices, but those are getting rolled over by multifunction devices. 
specific function MP3 players and specific function devices are less valuable to the consumer unless you like a real separation between your equipment. And as someone who as recently as 2015 was carrying a separate camera to their mobile, the upgrade of mobile phone features basically are gradually consuming other devices. So the old school, what do they do? What are they good for? They're good for SMS. They're good for text, for receiving texts. They're good for making phone calls. They're basically uh, very limited beyond that by feature design and therefore by all your audience's choice. The next level up, the Mobile Phone Plus, it's not a smartphone, it does some basic things, but really, again, this is the half world between I just want it to make calls and actually I would be okay with taking photos with it. Smartphones, these are basically your computers and waiting. These are your portable computers. They have the ability for mass personalization. They are custom. They have their own operating systems, they run like computers, and either they have a fixed internal space or expansion ability. But they also do interesting things, and you can have applications and you can use functions and features of the phone in the design of your application. So basically from a marketer's perspective, this semester, if you've been using Instagram, you have been doing M marketing. That's it. That's how easy it was to get you into doing mobile marketing. Effectively though, what you would have felt during this period is the mobile product life cycle. And that is one of the shortest half-lives in existence. The fact that I'm carrying a three generation old phone, which is now at the end of its two year contract. In that time, in the two year contractual obligation to stick with my phone, three phone types came and two of them went. So the 5S that I have has seen the 6 and the 6S and whatever the, the not quite 7 that's coming out. These are all basically one of the problems you have as a mobile marketer for targeting mobiles there was a big controversy around Apple reducing the screen size of its new iPhone because advertisers had designed their ads to fit on the bigger screens and hadn't designed them with scaling in mind. The fact that people were unable to hold the phone, so you literally couldn't see out hold the phone, they scaled back upgraded all the other parts but kept the smaller screen size that meant that people could actually use the phone. So there's a certain point in time where becoming turning into a large stone tablet or turning into a large uh, internet tablet was not useful. But again in this if you're doing mobile marketing you've got to think what are the operating systems my audience is most likely to have where do I need to be supporting how many different devices am I going to have to support? And that's one of the complexities of a very still rapidly churning and developing marketplace. The other thing that you need to consider, and this is the most important aspect, that's why we're still talking about e-commerce and mobile marketing. Using the phone is visible. And that's one of the things that needs to be considered is that the phone's use makes it a public device. It's a visible device. But the content of the phone is invisible. You can't see the screen. You can see me using the screen. So we have a very personal consumption process, very private consumption process with the phone. The phone becomes an extension of our self, becomes and because it's storing photos, memories, contact information, it's a communications device that links us to our friends and family. It's a very intimate personal device. So the 
visibility of the device does not make it a public forum. Showing up, advertising showing up, marketers showing up in the device can be extremely intrusive despite the fact people are in public. So if you're walking through a public space looking at your phone and suddenly a signal is broadcast from a shop somewhere that says, hey, a sale, a special, something. That is an incredibly interrupting, rude message because the fact that you're walking through a space engaged with your phone means that you've got a personal connection. Something is happening that you are personally, intimately engaged with, and that's an interrupt. It's not a good decision. So, in terms of your marketing, basically, back to your segmentation, audience match, technical match. Now, I've, phones give us a new segment variable, and that is basically device, what can the device do, and technical. So that's your technical demography, what is the device capable of doing, plus we then have your device skill set. And one of the things that many mobile marketers fell down on is that they would use complicated, well, simple to them approaches. And if you've ever seen a quick response code out in the field, out in the wild, and realize that the default camera on the iPhone doesn't read QR, so if you want to respond to a QR code, you have to ensure that you've previously downloaded a separate app. That app is within easy reach. And you look at it and go, oh, I'll load my quick reader app. It's not smooth and simple. It's an experience and it's a skill base. So that this, what should have been a very quick information gathering system has got way more complexity. And that complexity can be a feature. We can sell complex, remember? Simplicity is not the best. It's simply the easiest. What you are looking for is, do you want to make the segment work to access your materials? Because you are wanting to capture people with higher skill bases, higher mobile phone experience. Do you want to use and this is where you start thinking in terms of what applications on the phone do I want to use? Do I want to use Snapchat and its disposable messages? Do I want to use WhatsApp? Do I want to use Instagram? Do I want to use a different platform? Do I want to create my own application? What do we want to do in terms of how it's used, the type of phone it can be used on, the experience and the skills you need to use it, and if your audience is there? So, mentioned this before, but a key thing to remember is that the mobile marketing service scape is paradoxical. It's a private device that's visible in public. It's a gateway to someone else. It's a gateway to other people. So it's a very personal device. And you know it's a personal device because when somebody else picks up your phone, and starts to look at it. You've got that sense of intrusion. You also know it's a personal device because if you've lost it, left it behind, or you drop it and you apologize to the phone, if you do something to your phone and the first thing you do is say sorry to the phone, you know you've got the personal connection to it. This is a good thing. We're marketers. This is not a bad thing that someone actually has a personal connection because what we're seeing is that this is a distribution channel. It's a platform. It's a means to access other people and accessing other people is the killer feature of the internet. So, one of the things that, if we go back to the product chapter, one of the things you'll see is that there are a whole series of ways in which we can use the phone to achieve various internet marketing outcomes. And three I want to mention, so there are three particular elements I want to address. Revenue. Phones are revenue generating sources. The application, in-app purchasing, this is a direct revenue approach. 
you can go straight to revenue three. You can sell things at expensive rates. One of the most expensive mobile phone applications that exists is around $15,000 because it's the information training kit for passing an a legal bar exam where to sit the legal bar exam will cost you 45 will cost you 40 to 50 to 100 thousand dollars to sit the exam. An advice guide and a study guide for an exam that's a hundred thousand dollars, an advice guide at fifteen thousand dollars is a good price because everything's relative. Also, that moment when you hit confirm purchase application and you're billed 15k for something off your mobile because you know it's worth it. That's magic. That's the marketer's dream. Because the value is there. So we can sell directly. It is a direct billing. It's a wallet. It's got preset things. You can preload credit onto it. You can spend through it. So it's a good revenue source. It's a good platform for entertainment. It's a good platform to shift ideas. And now it's becoming a behavioral platform. We can use mobile technology, inclusive of the, uh, adding in something like a Fitbit that talks to a mobile device. We can encourage behavior through the device, and we can track and reward behavior through the device's sensors. So it's a really good platform. It's a distribution channel. And that's the key takeout now is what can we do with these phones that benefits our audience so that they will want to give us some money. All right, the last thing I want to talk about here is I've just I've really emphasized distribution and product. Price as well, but distribution and product. Promotion on the mobile phone is difficult, but feasible. It's an opt-in system. Don't use it for broadcast. Don't use it as a spam platform. Don't use it for unsolicited. Make it focused, make it specific, and make it useful. If you're going to text someone and they open that text, they see that text notification, you want it, you've interrupted them. So make what that interruption useful to them so that they value you as a provider. When your dentist texts you a reminder and a confirmation of your booking, when you're doctor texts you a reminder of your booking, when you get your annual checkup reminders, when you, those are value. When your hairdresser sends you a note saying it's been six weeks, how are you doing? 50-50 on the reminder. If they were to say it's been six weeks, text us a photo and we'll quote you, we'll tell you what we think we can do for your hair. It's a little more useful, but also builds, it's that relationship. If you are comfortable enough to text your hairdresser what, what your hair looks like that day, that's a relationship, and that's something you can use, and that's the promotion. You want to be thinking relationship marketing. So mobile, the chapter's got a lot of dead tech in it. It's one of the ones that survived. It was the worst survivor of the book. But there is a core fundamental set of principles in here that are valuable, and that is... The respect for the space, that is the mobile phone, the respect for the way consumers use their phones, and thinking of the phone as channel and channel for products. What can we embed in the phone? What can we sell to someone? What are the ideas and the behaviors required for them to put a virtual product onto their phones? When you think that through, that's going to put you in good stead as what will now be a marketer. We're no longer mobile marketers. It's not M marketing, it's just plain marketing. And that's a good thing.